Hello, and welcome back to this series on AP Computer Science on Educator.com. Today's lesson is about strings. Strings are one of the most useful features in the Java programming language, and you will likely use strings in virtually every computer program that you will write. So it's important to understand how they work and how best to make use of them. In this lesson, we'll first talk about literal strings, which is simply a sequence of characters delimited by double quote characters. We'll then talk about string variables and string concatenation. Concatenation is the process by which you take an existing string and add more characters onto the end of it, making a longer string. We'll talk about string length, how to find the length of a string or the number of characters that the string contains. We'll talk about string comparison, which is how you determine whether two strings contain exactly the same characters or not. We'll talk about taking a subset of a string. Perhaps you want to reuse only part of a string, and there are some methods for doing that in Java. And we'll conclude with some ways to search within a string, to find if a string contains a particular character or sequence of characters that you're interested in. First, we'll talk about literal strings. Strings in Java are implemented as a class called string. Strings are not one of the primitive types in Java, such as int, double, or boolean. Because they are implemented as a class, they have certain capabilities that primitive types don't have, but you do have to work with them a little bit differently. In Java, by convention, a class name typically begins with a capital letter. So when you're going to use an object of type string in your program, you need to be sure to capitalize the S. A string is immutable, and that's a big word that means that the contents of a string cannot be changed once they have been assigned. We'll talk more about that later in today's lesson. A, str a literal string is also sometimes referred to as a string literal. And this is simply a sequence of characters within double quotes. So here's an example of a literal string. I have the word hello with double quotes around it. A literal string is the simplest way of using strings in your program. So let's take a quick look at a simple example that makes use of a literal string. In this example, I'm going to use the system.out.println method to print exactly what is in my string here, which is the word hello, which is delimited with the double quotes before and after it. So if I run this, I get exactly the output that matches what's between the double quote marks here. This is how you typically use a string literal. When you use a string literal, it is not necessary to declare a variable or uh, to allocate memory for the string. The system automatically allocates memory for the characters in the string. That's all done behind the scenes, and you don't need to do anything special to make that happen. However, with the simplicity comes the limitation that a string that is used in this manner cannot be reused or even referred to later elsewhere in the program. So if you need a, another string literal, even if it contains the same characters, you need to declare another one if you're going to use it elsewhere in your program. When we talk about string variables next, we'll see how string variables overcome this limitation. With string variables, a string can be used more than once in a program. The contents of a string can be specified at runtime, which means you don't have to type it in while you're typing your program. Runtime means while your program is running, the contents can be specified. So the way you do this is you declare a string variable. You declare an object of type string, and you give it a name. In this case, I'm just calling it s. And then you assign the string object a val value 
using the assignment operator, which is the single equal sign. So I do that here, and I say s equals hello there. And I put the characters that I want to assign into the string between double quote marks. Then I can use that string variable s in my system.out.println statement just as though I was using a string literal, but I'm using a string variable instead. Furthermore, I can combine the, the declaration and the assignment of a string onto a single line. So I can declare string t and then immediately assign it the value high and then call print line to print that out. So let's take a look at a simple example using string variables. I will comment out the first example so we don't get duplicate output. And in this example, here I declare a string s and I assign it the value hello there. And I call print line on s to print the contents of the object s, which is a string. Then I use the second method, declaring a string and assigning it a value on the same line, and I call print line on that to print that value. So if I run this, I get first the output of hello there, which is the value of string s, and then I get hi, which is the value of string t. And they're each on their own line because I use the print line method. So that's how you use string variables.